This is the Prolex Orion 300 FS. And this is also the Prolex Orion 300 FS. And I think these could well be the best lights that I've ever used. And I'm absolutely not saying that because this is a sponsored video. If you know me, you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I do very, very few sponsored videos. I've got to truly love something to recommend it like this, something that I would buy myself. And these are fantastic hard lights. And I love hard lights because they are incredibly flexible, both with using modifiers and these use a standard Bowens mount, but also the incredibly clever things for this light. Can do. So let me break down the setup I have here with these two lights. To my left, the key light is pointing up at a reflector board, a really soft one that gives a nice diffused light coming back to me. The color that it's set to is actually called Sun Direct. It's one of the presets in the source matching. The light behind me is, of course, another Orion 300FS, and that has a projector on it with a gobo. I've blurred the edges of it with the lens and I've rotated that gobo about 25, 30 degrees. It's at full brightness and the color temperature is actually at 2000 degrees Kelvin, so very low. The idea to give this very warm, golden hour-esque sun coming through a fictional window and blinds up there, which is basically my bedroom. There is no window there, but that's the idea anyway. But that's not it. There's one more reflector board, a small, very reflective one, which is also using that main key light. And that is bouncing light onto the rear kitchen wall, onto the window, which is giving me my catch light. That's my setup. It's a bit fiddly, but it's worth it. It's fun experimenting with these sort of things, because otherwise it's just pitch black in here. Well, it is nighttime after all. I'm gonna go into a lot of what this light can do, but if you really want to get super technical, I thoroughly recommend reading the article by Matthew Allard on newshooter.com. I've linked it in the description. He literally dissects every aspect of them. It's absolutely amazing. It must have taken him months. But before I get into all the clever things that it can do, let's just talk about the most basic thing first, light itself, or rather the lack of it, especially in England, especially in my house, especially at night but also during the daytime, because it's not that great. I love where I live. I love my house. I've been here 26, 27 years. The thing is, it's a dark house. It's a Victorian terrace that has houses either side. So there's no windows there. I do have some windows in the kitchen here on the side, some Velux windows, but the light is really blocked from next door. It's pretty dark in here, especially in the winter. If there is sun in the morning, I get some light reflected from the house opposite and a bit coming in through the front, but that's about it. In here, nah, not in the winter. In the summer, it's a different story because the sun comes much further around and I get some lovely light coming in in the late afternoon and evening. Just for myself, it makes me feel happy and good. Not in the winter, it's horrible. But even if you do have light, if you're filming, that's the problem because you need it to be continuous light and daylight is very rarely continuous light unless it's just a gray blanket all day. So you do need to take control and that's what I've been doing in this space for a long time.
that's it for me. The light is pretty much gone. What there is that's getting into the lounge is absolute minimal. It's really depressing. I'm still going to capture it to replicate the lovely greyness inside my house using the app. This is horrible out here. I can record up to two minutes, but I'm not staying out here for two minutes. It's just going to loop. So that's absolutely fine. It's not exactly going to change. I'm getting soaking wet. Grey sky. And save it. I'm going back inside. So much. So this is me in natural light at the base ISO and that's in of the Sony A7S III of 100. To see me, we've got to go all the way up to 20,000 ISO. The second base of this camera is 4,000. So yeah, I've had to pump it up quite a lot just to see me. And of course, this isn't lighting. This is just adding noise. This is also ISO 100, but now with the Orion 300 bouncing off of the kitchen ceiling, give me a nice soft light. And the color is that video recording of the gray sky that I filmed outside. It's one of my favorite things about these lights, the ability to color match really accurately. And not just for a single light source, as in just a color, by recording video for a moving light source, a changing light source, you can play it back and it will copy it. By turning down the intensity of the light by 50% and increasing the ISO of the camera to compensate, I've evened things out a little bit more and I think it gives it a, a nicer look. It feels more like a really nice natural light source, even though it's gray. Now, simply at 5.6K on the light and this looks nice. It looks like what I'd like it to be in here most of the time, but it isn't. The other chip on board, COB cob lights that I've used are either daylight or by color. These are the first ones that I've used which can do every color. And they're not RGBWW lights. Red, green, and blue, and two whites, one at tungsten and one at daylight. There are no white LEDs in here. Instead, there's red, green, blue, amber, cyan, and lime ones. They call this their Hyperlights color engine. This is definitely a superior way of getting all of the colors of the spectrum, but also getting a really high quality of light. The Orion 300 FS is a powerful, small carb hard light. This light is all about color, good color. A six color engine, precise, excellent color temperature, a brilliant solution for the challenges facing cinematographers when skin tones are so sensitive to the various chips that we use in our cameras. The Orion 300 FS, it's called 300 because it's 300 watts, has six key lighting modes, which you can control either from the separate power supply control, which is very nice and has intuitive controls, or from my preferred way using their Chroma Link app. There are other high-end subscription-based apps, but I've just been using the Chroma Link app as it does everything I need it to do. The CCT mode is probably the most commonly used as it lets you adjust your Kelvin from 2000 to 20,000. And also has green magenta adjustments if needed to match other light sources. The hue saturation intensity or HSI mode lets you choose any color you want and very easily. There are over 300 Roscoe and Lee gels to choose from. I am not gonna go through them all. The source matching is one of my favorite modes. It has a whole host of pre-mapped lighting sources to replicate everyday, natural, and artificial light sources. You use these to enhance lights which are actually there or to completely replace them. Let me do a very quick demonstration. Just imagine I am 
inside my car. These must be the slowest traffic lights in the whole of London. Hello, cat. What are you doing out here? You should be back inside. It's horrible out here. Got a name? I call you a Ryan. Yeah. Hi, Ryan. I'm busy. People have no patience. Why can't they just chill out? Just traffic lights, you know? No biggie. Go back inside. If you've ever used an RGB star light, you'll be familiar with effects modes, and we have loads in these lights as well. I mean, most you're never going to use, to be honest with you, but there are some that you would definitely use. I don't think the fluorescent flicker is something I would use on a regular basis, because it could be quite irritating, but some of them, definitely, I would use. Don't worry, I'm not gonna go through every single effect. That would just take too long and be far too silly. Now these are all fine and fun, but when would you actually use them? Well, the fire one I've used and the candle one I've used a fair bit because it can add a really nice effect to things. But recently I used it for the Mavic 3 review and candle in the frame, which doesn't give off a lot of light, but I wanted that light. So I used the candle effect. <laughs> All the filming up to this point had been outside in the cold, and so I wanted to make the indoor section really super warm and cozy. And to be honest, I actually do have lots of candles going in here. Fake ones though, because I've got cats. As this whole section is about how much time you lose in this part of the workflow with this drone, I wanted to get a sense of just my life slipping away. And the really strong lights added a really nice over the top effect. Ah, good, finished. I can look at this footage now. I'm gonna turn off this stupid light. But there's something in here which I absolutely love and it's my favorite feature, and that's the recording mode. You can actually record a moving light source and then play it back. Let me show you using a lava lamp. This is an interesting look, something you're really going to use a lot, but I just wanted to see if I could color match two different lava lamps at the same time. Now that I've done it, I see no reason for me to ever do this again. One lava lamp is enough. Two, too many. I don't have any more. Three, four, five. If you've already got your own accessories and modifiers, which are bones mounts, and they will fit on here. It does come with a standard reflector, which I've been using a lot. You can also get their excellent dome softbox, their lantern, and the two times for now with barn doors. The coolest one for me though, is their projection kit. I've loved using gobos with projectors on lights ever since I got my first one back when I went freelance in 2006. You can use it for some really over the top backgrounds. My favorite way is to be a, a little bit subtle. A little bit subtle. The light itself is very well made. The yoke and lock is very solid. 
The cables both for the power controller unit and then the light itself are nice and long. You can also put two V-Lock or AB Gold batteries, depending on which ones you get, onto the power unit. And it has a power draw of 320 watts. Yeah, I'm sorry your Sony L batteries won't cut it here. Using these lights for the past two or three months has been an absolute joy. The color accuracy, the rendition of skin tones is just gorgeous. When I need the power, it has the oomph. And when I need to be really finessing my light and be delicate with it, it's got that too. And then there's all the amazing fancy things that it does, but the key thing is that source matching. So incredibly important. So yeah, I think these could well be the best lights that I've ever used.